Excuse me. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's go. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Deng Hui from China Mobile. And I'm Chris Donnelly from Huawei. Yeah, today we are going to present you uh, open all, uh, the, the one open source project we are proposing today. And uh, before I get started, I would like to claim because this open source project hasn't been uh, officially formed, and uh, I think most of you has already heard. Uh, we are going to uh, finalize the deadline about the agreement around. June 1st. So what we are discussing here is not officially signed by, I mean, uh, not constructed uh, organization. So what I can claim here is mostly uh, what we are discussing today. And we came here trying to invite people, uh, you, to consider to help us, to join us, to work together. That's the, the purpose we are here. And so the, we are going to present firstly is about why why open O? Today in Telecom Operations Network, we already had lots of deployment, especially in the data center. We have SDN for the overlay controlling, and also we have the um, optical, metro, layer 2, layer 3 SDN deployment in our MAN network already, and also e even in the access side. So all of the SDN has been deployed, then some of us will consider why we, why not we can use our resources more efficiently by the virtualize them? Then we, you can see every step we can try something virtualization. Then um, some of the application you can see today, not all of the telecom vendors are really uh, would like to work with us uh, with operators about the application to be virtualized. They just move the ATC based the software directly to the x86. <coughs> excuse me, uh, platform, but that won't work. So we need a cloudified solution for the software. That will take time. But when we do the, when we want really deploy it, so you can do the step by either first NV or later SDN. You can do other, the other way, the first SDN or the later NV. But when you do the end-to-end -end service concentration, you do need one layer on top of them. That is the Unified SDN and V orchestration. So most operators today's network, we call it a hybrid network. The reason is very simple. Very simplified example is, uh, like China Mobile, we deploy. I mean, we spend like uh, 25 billion US dollar every year. So all of those expenditures, we call them the legacy, because. When you do the SDN free, they don't support it. You have to consider to the telecom operator by supporting all of them together, including legacy, SDN, and the virtualized environment. So, um, so continue. You, if you people, you can look at the center. Uh, lots of people are proposing like super controller or global or domain controller. So we are thinking. The controller, the, the design, the purpose of the controller mostly is about the resource abstraction and also pass calculation. That is the principle of the steering controller. But when we're talking about the orchestration, orchestration is doing the service resource orchestration. So that requires you to have to interwork with the legacy OSS, BSS, even apps. So, but some people are thinking, so why not we put together about the uh, path calculation together with services and resource orchestration. But my challenge, my argument will be, we have to decouple the service with the resources. That's the beauty of the orchestration. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So the orchestration is, is looks like this. They have to cover in the telecom operator, you have to go from the multiple domain, multiple layers, and multiple windows. So that's the difference between the, uh, the operator's network can, compared to the uh, distributed, I mean, the uh, legacy uh, OTT's network. So some people are thinking, OK, so today, why not using the enterprise solution directly to the telecom? First of all, it doesn't happen yet. 
uh, there are multiple reasons. I, here I just give a very simple reason to help us to understand much easily. The, the, the OTTs network, the enterprise network, they are just like a data centers distributed. Like you can put into the New York, you can put into Tokyo, you and you can put into the Paris. So all of them are flat network. It's a totally distributed and the equality of the IOA data center. But when you come to the telecom network, we are the different. The 3GPP has designed the EPC radio. So those architecture is heretic. If you go to the broadband forum or cable lab, so whatever they are doing, they have layers of the architectures. So you have the either wireless radio, fiber, Wi-Fi access, and you have the layers gateway side, and even you have the core side for the uh, applications. So this kind of design architecture of the telecom is totally different than OTT. So if you compare with that hierarchic architecture of telecom, then you can look at to your right side is the complexity of the carriers. The carriers was supposed to provide the connections for the subscriber. So we are assumed to always provide the connectivity to the mobile phone, to their broadband at home. So that is what we are doing today. But to do that, we need to build a very complexity of the network in between those services. I mean, if you put service into the data center. So those connect this complexity of the connectiv connectivity of service is different from the, between the enterprise and the telecom operator. I can see uh, this is the, the, the really difference from in my heart. I mean, we have the optical layers, there are different transitions. The OTT, they're just peering. Distributed, data center, you can do that. So we, we see this is a difference in, of the telecom compared with enterprise. Then we come to the enterprise continue to propose, for example, uh, the, based on the today's uh, uh, OpenStack, they are proposing like a OEM for manager or orchestrator. So they are, today I think I can see that it's mostly enterprise and free solution. So, but for telecom um, operator, we are talking, targeting it's different. We are targeting telecom and free solution. So we are targeting telecom and free orchestrator, and we are targeting telecom and free VM for manager. So that is different from the enterprise part. So we, we have our complexity. We have our difficulty. We understand that. So the, we have the, as I said, I spent 25 billion US dollar every year, then those things is not easy for you to change that. The people management, those expenditures, they don't want things to be, I mean, to be inter interrupted or to sometimes get something wrong. So they ask you, ask us to align with, in some sense, I'll tell you later about how to align that. About legacy OSS, BSS system, you need unified SDN and free API. You also need to support the hybrid, like the even VMware and OpenStack use cases. And most, uh, so most importantly, uh, we get used to standard, we also need the information modeling. So that will help us. So I put question mark here to let people to think about that. But what we are doing is not just, uh, I mean, the, like a baby step, but we are trying to be revolutionary. Um, so what we are doing revolutionary, we are thinking, why not we do the OSS become the open source software? That is from OS to the OSS. If you look at your left side, it's the legacy telecom operators, uh, operation uh, architectures. Each of the vendor today, they provide the proprietary EMS for their product. And uh, probably either operate it yourself or you go through some other vendors Provided the OSS to management all of this proprietary solution. So that is really hurt for the operator today. So we, when we come to the SDN, we, when we have the data modeling comes out, we have information modeling comes out, then we thought, oh, this we are going to change. So what are we are going to change? We, if we can put, we replace by the orchestrator to our legacy OSS, uh, even the 
an orchestration part, then go through this orchestration part, we can talk to the legacy resources of the OSS, and we also need to talk to the billing system of the BSS, even ours, to management the SGNN free and the EMS legacy part. In order to do that, uh, we think these uh, steps one, two, three, to your right, you can see uh, we need uh, the discovery and abstraction of resources. We also need to define the modeling uh, or mapping in top to the illustration. So this is a really revolutionary work. But to do this revolution, to make this really happen, we cannot just make, uh, I mean, the bloody revolution. We have to make a smooth revolution. Because bloody revolution, we are not happy, the legacy part. So we have to think about how to do that. I, I'm going to explain my vision about, our vision about the, how we migrate from the legacy to the, uh, the future of the SDN and free orchestration part. So the, the open O here, we are representing this kind of revolution. Uh, we, we hope we can uh, to build a unified open source orchestrator on, on top of them. So this is quite, quite similar. We, I made a, a comparison. The, today's success of cloud computing because of the success of the internet. The internet become a success because of the simplified of the IP. Just because of that is a simplification of IP, that internet going everywhere, go to the global. So IP has successfully to decouple the layer two or layer one, the infrastructure with the top layers, the transportation application, applications. But what orchestration doing today for the operator is the same. The so orchestration is decoupling the resource infrastructure with the service layer. We, if we unify the service layer tied in together with the resources, that we are not to let operator to evolution to the right direction. For, for that reason, uh, we, we, we are thinking the orchestrator uh, becomes a very important sitting right in the middle to decouple the service and the resources. So open source, especially open O, is going to create a unified orchestration abstraction. So the, um, the open O has uh, many benefits. I think people have already heard too many things. But here, I'm, I just want to mention one of the points here is about the um, pre-integration. So the, the very important for the telecom operator is you need to do the pre-integration. The time to market is not just, OK, I can run everything, then time to market will be very short. The most important is you need to do something pre-integration based on the modeling. So that will save you time to market, reduce the complexity, improve your quality, security, and stability. So the, to by reducing the integration, so what we open, orchestration is mostly owned by the system integrator. So by reducing the time for the integration, by doing something pre-integration, you will be success uh, to really help the operator. So that's one point I want to make. And uh, so coming next, I, so Chris, you are going to talk about a little bit about open OS. Thank you. Uh, let, let's talk uh, a little bit deeper about uh, OpenO. Uh, and uh, first, uh, uh, we'd like to talk about our mission and scope. Uh, this uh, slide is from our charter document. Uh, and there are a lot of words on it. Um, so uh, uh, let me just highlight a few things. Uh, first, our real goal is uh, any service on any network. Uh, uh, across uh, SDN, NFE, and legacy networks. Um, and uh, second is uh, that we want to uh, be model-driven, uh, that we're going to support uh, common and vendor-specific data models uh, and interoperability uh, across uh, different controllers, different VNFs, uh, different VIMs, and uh, different VNFMs. Uh, and uh, as we was just mentioning, uh, we want to uh, reduce uh, the customization uh, and accelerate innovation uh, in uh, the uh, multi-vendor uh, ecosystem. Uh, so let's talk about our architecture. Uh, from a, a very high level, uh, we have uh, an orchestration service uh, consisting of uh, three modules, uh, global service orchestration uh, that manages 
uh, the end-to-end -end orchestration. Uh, and then uh, SDNO, uh, which manages connectivity services, uh, NFBO, uh, which manages uh, virtualization services, uh, and then uh, a common driver layer uh, supporting uh, multiple controllers, uh, multiple VNFMs, and multiple VIMs, uh, uh, surrounded by common services and common tools. In a deeper look at uh, three of the modules, uh, the uh, GSO, the Global Services Orchestrator, uh, focuses on the end-to-end -end, uh, network service orchestration. Uh, it uh, provides uh, the unified uh, service orchestration, uh, both the legacy and the SDN NFE networks, uh, uh, under uh, multi-vendor circumstances. And uh, uh, this is the part that will integrate uh, with a vendor's uh, or excuse me, with the carrier's OSS, BSS systems, as well as uh, in the future uh, with uh, new uh, cloud-based uh, provisioning systems uh, with the GUIs and portals uh, that are uh, being developed. Uh, next, uh, we go into uh, the NFBO, uh, which is an Etsy MANO compliant uh, NFE orchestrator. Uh, and uh, this will uh, manage uh, the uh, virtualized applications and uh, virtual network functions. Uh, and uh, works on uh, the uh, onboarding uh, and uh, lifecycle management and resources uh, for uh, the VNFs. Uh, and the third component uh, is SDNO, uh, which manages connectivity services uh, across uh, both the uh, SDN networks uh, and uh, across uh, legacy networks. And uh, uh, if you look at these together, uh, the uh, SDN orchestrator, the SDNO component, uh, manages uh, the underlay, uh, and then the NFBO uh, would manage an overlay network uh, on top of that. Right, so I think this page, I, I, this is different from I presented last month in the OpenR Summit, because I really think this is important to let people to understand the, uh, the differences between the legacy so I, this is to your left side is your the, the today's uh, operators um, network management system. On the top is the BSS. It's more like a, a, a product orchestration. And uh, if you look at the center, that is OSS is doing two things. One thing is customer facing services. The other thing is like resource facing service services. And if you look at the uh, global service orchestrator, it's right sitting over there. And also, if you look at the MVO and SDO, it's sitting across both service layer and also resource layer. So the global service orchestrator is going to decouple the service both to both sides, either the SDN orchestration and also, but also MVO orchestration, that's the orchestration layer. So, and then you can under that, you can have the resource orchestration by the uh, either now services or, or we have services uh, defined under the bottom side. So, so this mapping, you can see, uh, it's very important for people to understand the why we design like this. So we are not saying we are same like a legacy, but we are saying we try to make smooth revolution other than bloody revolution. The smooth revolution means you need to, to because today if you go to the telecom operators, or they, they said, everything on my side, resource orchestration, resource is already depository. I, I have all of the information over there. Why you need add something more? So what they are missing there is they do not have virtualized information, which virtualized resources. So for that reason, you, for the orchestration, you need to talk to both the legacy resources and also the, the newly built the virtualized resources. But how can we do the smooth revolution you buy, I didn't draw clearly here, I just want to talk orally, verbally. I mean, the, you can do by SDN orchestration to connect to the legacy EMS to get the more and more legacy resource into the orchestration layer. But uh, because historically, all of the legacy resources go through the legacy OSS side on your left side. They will not go top to the OSS, then make a right turn to our orchestration. So if you do revolutionary, you have to do something by bypass of the legacy OSS and to our side. So based on this kind of migration, you can step by step 
migrate the legacy resources to the new OSS system. So this is the vision we can see uh, how we can really deploy this without make a, I mean, the bloody revolution to let operator can really deploy SDN free based on the orchestration, I mean, this kind of new architectures. That's what I see. So I would like to present this uh, to explain why, why we operator thinking uh, is important. And uh, continue, I think everybody has already agreed because the legacy OSSPS is not success. The reason is modeling is not a success. Uh, but today, time flies. Everything has changed because we have the modeling over there. We can do like a unified source creation provisioning and based on the normalized modeling. So that's, I think I do not need to spend time. If, uh, people sitting here, we all agree, modern dreaming framework. The, the one of the other important thing I would like to mention for the orchestration is, so most people are talking about the high availability, carry greater capability, uh, the virtualized, for example, OpenStack doesn't support computing node high availability today. They only support controller. Uh, the, one of the sending projects is also working on to try to help to improve that. But for those who carry great capability, uh, we have seen um, you can do either wait until the failure really happen, or you can do something prediction before that happen, based on what you learned, uh, the analytics, the data. So that's very important. We are not going to wait until, I mean, the, uh, the machine learning or data, data mining, this kind of technology will help us to improve, to help us to really deploy the virtualized environment in our network. So this kind of, uh, we are building this by double loop. Uh, I mean, the, you can do either like a, a real-time response or a long-time response, uh, different kind of looping technology. You can set in your policy to reconfigure your, either your virtual infrastructure or, or your VNF management by kind of healing or whatever. And so in order to do that, you need to collect to monitor not only just the virtual infrastructure by either here or OpenStack, you can use like Monasca or telemet telemetry or uh, Cellimeter or whatever, but also you need to collect the information from the VNFs. So those information will help you together to build your analytics tool to, uh, to change your policy to try to help the virtualized infrastructure uh, without really f in the last time, to f in the last minute to face in the failures. So I see this is really the, uh, important for the virtualized environment, for the open stack, for the uh, MVSDM part. So we are also working on this part. And uh, uh, the other thing I also would like to talk is about the social chaining uh, in the open world we are considering today. I give one of the uh, animation to let you, you help us to understand uh, what we are doing here. So firstly, we have the customer order. P billing system is always there. That's the, the most important part for the today's operator. We, we are making money from them, but so we cannot just, without consider, just do our orchestration. So the, we have the product, customer order production certification. Then we put this down to the uh, service certification, and then we have the VM following graph chain over there, then we can do decoupling either by, firstly goes to the MFU orchestration, we have VM following graph. What we believe is that we need a VM for a service function chaining engine is sitting inside the orchestration layer other than VM for manager, because he has the view, he has the global view, the vision of the uh, the network infrastructure end to end. Then later, you send this one, uh, the decoupled service function chaining to different VM manager. Then different VM manager will continue to deploy uh, uh, service function chaining to under the VNF. Then you simultaneously you ask us a string controller to, to configure the policy on the classifier even over to the uh, or we open with switch under the servers, then you can really build the end-to-end -end service function chaining. So this is the really telecom service function chaining. Uh, we are rely on multiple vendors 
other than just one vendor to deploy a service fine training. So that is the reason we put service fine training engine in our orchestration. So this I would like to highlight as well to help you to understand. Um, yeah, so next use case, Pete. <laughs> so, Chris, you are more familiar with it. Thank you. Uh, let's put OpenO uh, uh, into practice. We've talked a lot about the theory behind it and the architecture. Um, when, uh, uh, let's explore a, a virtual CPE use case. Uh, so the scenario is that uh, the customer wants an internet access service uh, with uh, 500 megabits per second uh, with firewall and NAT services. Um, and uh, we need to uh, put this together in a virtual CPE solution uh, in the overlay uh, network service. Uh, the catalog registers uh, that uh, the, uh, the customer gets 500 megabits per se second uh, internet access with the firewall and the NAT. Uh, in the enterprise case, uh, we uh, understand that there's also firewall and policy control and then in the data center, uh, we add a service chain uh, adding the uh, vCPE and vNAT functions. And uh, finally, uh, in the underlay, in the base uh, access network, uh, we need to uh, uh, complete a circuit uh, across a uh, potentially uh, complicated uh, network uh, with multiple classes of service and a hierarchical QoS. So uh, using uh, OpenO, uh, we can put uh, the customer information uh, into the design time catalog uh, and pass that off to uh, the global service O, GSO, uh, which uh, provides uh, the overlay network service and understands end to end uh, how to build the service. Uh, it also uh, keeps uh, the end to end uh, uh, topology uh, for the service. Uh, then it talks to SDNO uh, to bring up the underlay, uh, to set up the, the network connection uh, over uh, whatever uh, access network uh, may be present, whether it's legacy uh, or whether it supports uh, SDN. Uh, and uh, this uh, could potentially talk to um, multiple EMS systems, uh, to talk to uh, legacy equipment, uh, and then uh, one or more uh, SDN controllers. Uh, uh, potentially you would have uh, multiple controllers, uh, one for your access network and maybe a second one uh, for a transport network, uh, just for example. Uh, and next, uh, we need to uh, set up the service uh, in the enterprise. And uh, so we use the NFVO component, uh, which uh, is responsible uh, for uh, the overlay service uh, inside the enterprise. Uh, it has uh, the uh, uh, topology uh, uh, for the enterprise uh, and uh, the forwarding graph, uh, and also sets up uh, the firewall and policy control uh, VNFs. Uh, and then also uh, in the data center, uh, we need to uh, set up uh, uh, yet another uh, topology map and uh, forwarding graph and uh, maintain uh, the uh, VCPE and uh, VNAT functions uh, with the appropriate service chaining. Uh, and then global service orchestrator, the GSO, uh, stitches together uh, all the different components uh, to make one end-to-end -end service. So we'd like to invite all of you uh, to join with us uh, as we build this system. Uh, OpenO is a Linux Foundation project. Uh, we are uh, planning to officially launch on June 1st, and uh, we uh, fill a gap uh, between uh, the uh, infrastructure and OSS layer. Uh, so you can see uh, where we fit uh, with uh, various other Linux Foundation uh, projects uh, that uh, uh, Linux Foundation has been uh, up to this point, uh, working on performance functions, uh, on SDN controllers, on NFV, um, and of course on the operating system and, and containers uh, uh, on top of that. Uh, the one area uh, that uh, hasn't been filled in is management and orchestration, uh, and uh, this is uh, the area that we're focusing on. And uh, we play well with others. Uh, we will be working uh, with um, many other open source uh, communities, uh, including OpenStack, uh, also OPNFE, uh, and uh, Open Daylight and Onos, uh, just to name a few. Uh, we are building uh, an Etsy uh, NFB uh, compliant MANO uh, with uh, the NFBO component. Uh, we plan to uh, integrate with 
a variety of VNFMs, uh, including TACR. Uh, and we are also uh, uh, looking at other uh, standards organizations, uh, such as uh, potentially MEF with LSO, uh, uh, being able to uh, work in our community. Uh, and uh, we will uh, be working with uh, OPNFV uh, to make sure that uh, we appropriately uh, integrate in uh, with future offerings. And uh, we also uh, are interested in interoperating uh, and uh, integrating with uh, uh, TACR. So uh, our relationship with uh, OpenStack uh, is that uh, we intend uh, to provide uh, customer-facing services through uh, uh, OpenO, through the Global Services Orchestrator piece, uh, and uh, also connect uh, with uh, OpenStack uh, for uh, VNFM and uh, VIM services, uh, but uh, uh, keep end-to-end uh, -end services in the GSO module uh, and uh, build our own uh, NFVO and uh, also connectivity services uh, through the SDNO module. Uh, so uh, specifically, uh, we're looking to uh, integrate with Tacker for the VNFM uh, and uh, with uh, uh, other uh, OpenStack components, uh, Nova, Neutron, uh, Cinder, and Swift, for example, uh, for the VIM, uh, working through uh, OPNFE. Uh, and uh, in our scenario, uh, we'd be uh, looking to Tacker uh, for uh, many VNFM functions, including the catalog, um, uh, VNF lifecycle management, uh, performance and health monitoring, um, healing and configuration, just to name a few. And uh, we'd like to uh, invite you to join with us. Uh, we uh, currently have uh, uh, 15 partners uh, uh, who we've been meeting with uh, in uh, the pre-formation activities. Uh, we are uh, opening, openly calling uh, for founding members, uh, and we have uh, a membership agreement uh, and charter document uh, that we are happy to share, and uh, we will uh, have the, um, an opening for founding members up until uh, June 1st of this year uh, when we plan to officially launch. And a few milestones uh, on our timeline. Um, as I just mentioned, uh, June 1st is our uh, launch date. Uh, we plan to uh, have a hack fest at the uh, OPNFE Summit uh, at uh, the end of June. And uh, we are also uh, working towards a first release uh, by the end of the year, uh, sometime in Q4. Uh, the community is uh, still forming and uh, we will make a decision on uh, the final launch date uh, in early June. And I think we have uh, just a few minutes for a Q&A. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please line up at the microphones. Um, it's uh, uh, challenging to see from here, uh, but it's easier if you're at the, the mics. Sure. Uh, hi. So uh, as an outsider looking in, I'm going to have to play devil's advocate here. Um, so of course, you can build a uh, an open source version of uh, OSS BSS system, that's fine with uh, proprietary plugins going down to different EMSs and all that. But it seems like this architecture kind of promotes multiple resource orchestrators, multiple vendor specific VNF managers, and multiple VIMs. And I guess from cloud, the whole point is that I have one uniform infrastructure that I can, can share and, and, and use across all different VNFs from different vendors. And it seems like I don't want to run multiple open stacks that are vendor specific. So how am I wrong? <laughs> right. Uh, a, few, a few things to start with is uh, that uh, the networking industry uh, as a whole is uh, still evolving. Uh, and there are multiple SDN controllers, uh, for example, uh, Onos uh, and uh, Open Daylight. Uh, and uh, different operators are uh, selecting uh, different components. So we want to be flexible. Uh, we want to have a, a common driver layer uh, so that we can support uh, uh, you know, whatever a particular uh, operator needs, but providing a level of abstraction uh, so that you can write a cloud application once uh, and uh, you, you know, just say, I need a network uh, and here are the parameters that I need 
and not know what the SDN controller is or the VIM underneath it, uh, and uh, we'll handle that for you. So it's, it's really about flexibility and choice uh, for the service providers. Yes, so I totally agree. I think also there are already lots of the uh, cloud has been already deployed. So they are not based on OpenStack, it's already there. And uh, also uh, VMware has marketing in shares in the operator today, it's already there. Uh, we, we like the beauty of the uniform, right? So, but to be realistically, we have to face in the reality. We need to handle this. Otherwise, the, the people from not one many people say, I don't want to do this because you are not really migrating. So they want smooth migration. Please. Uh, this is Alicia from Comcast. Uh, I think great you know, presentation. Uh, we also share a very similar uh, vision approach. Uh, one challenge we have is uh, you talk about the unified uh, service creation. Uh, what's your you know, take? I think we have the challenge we have is how we unify the analytics. And you also you have a slide talk about analytics. Uh, I think today, I think each component you know they tend to have their own analytics. The, the challenge is how you unify that. And then if you can unify, the second one is how you can tie the unified analytic with your unified uh, model when you do the service uh, creation. Yeah, I think very, very good questions here. The, uh, exactly, I mean, the, uh, we are designed this by messaging bars, right? So analytics is just one module to plug on the, the message bars. So an analytics, they are not just saying you can only do one of the uh, learning uh, through the analytics part. You can, based on different use cases, you can call in different uh, the analytics. I mean, analytics tools might be, uh, you can either, you can even adjust the weight, that adjust those uh, uh, features, not necessarily. Uh, so what I can see is that we have multiple purpose use cases for the end-to-end -end services, but we have to design this um, so we, we are not always, de de so even we have a manager have his own, I mean, the analytics to, to do the auto healing or whatever they can prepare the solution for today. So uh, we have vendors, but we are providing the kind of tour for you if you really like use that. And then you can, uh, I mean, calling different from different module by different uh, parameters, uh, different uh, uh, features uh, together other than just uh, using common analytics tools, right? So, uh, so that analytics module can support multiple use purposes or the, um, you, you, there's multiple algorithm over there. It's not always just like a uh, neural algorithm or neural network algorithm, or you can do the logic statistic, statistical algorithm. There are many choice for you to do that. This is just tools or the module that we are implementing over there. Um, do you take an approach, uh, you want to aggregate all your analytics, you know, especially yeah. if you're going with a big data approach, do you also aggregate, you know, all the you know, data into uh, uh, another central location where you still uh, kind of utilize the, the, the individual, you know, analytics, and then you kind of harmonize and distribute in that way? Yeah, so we, we, right now we are just designed like a double closed loop, it's more like a uh, major coverage purpose other than the uh, big, like a big data. We, we do have big data on somewhere location areas. So that could be, so I think you are talking whether we can align this to can by uh, design a new, I mean more wider analytics. That, that could be possible. Um, but I think we need a, a more contributor. We are just the beginner of that. Yes. Uh, we, I think we still need, a, for example, if Comcast are interesting, we are very honored working with you about that direction. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I have, a que I have a question that since you mentioned Taker, which is the OpenStack uh, service that focuses on FV support, uh, so um, do you think uh, there is some obvious gap between its current ability uh, and our requirement, or something can improve? Yeah, it's, I, Honestly, I read the, your newly proposed uh, uh, future vision, right? So uh, I, I can comment until today, uh, we treat that as a VMF manager, but I still think that there's still a big gap about what we are expecting. And especially when we compare with others VMF manager, uh, still I see there's a distance 
And uh, I presented a couple of times, even open our summit. I mentioned many things over there. Even today, I also mentioned four points over there. You can look at it there. And so you, so because the, that's already presented there, then I hope you already understand them. Yeah, sure, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Brian? Yeah, hi. Uh, so this is gonna draw a thread with the previous comment about uh, analytics. Um, I saw on the slide you had EMS, right? Which I assume it means that for legacy applications, right? <clears throat> things which aren't virtualized or, or things for which it's so complex that the vendor has to provide you an EMS, you're gonna accommodate that. Yes. I mean, I think that's a reality. That's a brownfield problem, it's a reality. But what, what we need to be driving to, I think, and I would suggest that we work on this in, in OPNFE and, and across you know, OpenO, OSM, and, and whatever, is, the, um, is ensuring consistency for VNFs going forward as much as possible with the common analytics you know, uh, capability. Um, so to, to that point, I mean, right now, it, for like five different products, you get five different monitoring solutions. You know, even exact same spec, you have different semantics for the, for the exact same values in those specs. And it's really not scalable, and especially in a virtualized world, we have to converge. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, we have a project proposal in OPNFE we're going to do on, on uh, open sourcing part of our ECOMP framework, AT&T's ECOMP framework, specifically focused on a, a, um, a consistent spec uh, uh, and an actual code for collecting uh, analytics directly from VMs, right? And, and then publishing up to a collector, which behind has a Hadoop uh, you know, data lake, and then you could do whatever clever things you want to do above that. So I think that's, that's the sort of thing that we need to do at this point as we start these projects to make sure that we're driving convergence from, from day one, right, with, re with regard to analytics. So is that, is that the sort of thing that you're, you're thinking that OpenO is, is, you know, is ready to collaborate on between you know, OPNFE and... and uh, in other solutions or other projects? Yes, uh, what we're trying to do is build a common framework uh, and then also uh, collaborate with the rest of the industry on uh, common information and data models uh, you know, to, to facilitate exactly what you're talking about is uh, common data collection uh, from all the, uh, the various BNFs uh, and then being able to uh, act on that uh, as is appropriate for the service provider environment. Uh, so we're just getting started, uh, and that's uh, something we're building to, but uh, this is something that we're building into the architecture from the beginning, uh, is uh, the, uh, the common framework uh, and um, uh, the ability to uh, 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 plug in uh, different components as uh, the industry uh, coalesces around uh, particular functions. Okay, well, we're going to donate that into OPNFE. It's going to be the spec, uh, you know, JSON based uh, spec for VNF, you know, you know, syslogs, whatever data coming from the, 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 the VM, and also uh, code for the collector and the agent that you install. So basically, out of the box, it'll work, you know, and we can, right. we can take it from there. Yeah, so there's the three interfaces for so the analytics part. One is from the EMS, the other one is from VNF, the other one, the last one we found the virtual infrastructure. The, those need to be aligned. But yeah, so I'm, thank you. I mean, the last one, we have running out of time. I think we're I out of time. Yeah. Uh, perhaps we should uh, catch up in the hallway uh, okay. after the session. So, so thank you, you. you. Can we talk offline? Okay. Thank you.